Hello seniors, my name is Mrs. Ritchie and I am the scholarship coordinator here at Kennedy. And we are here today so that you can learn about how you can help yourself pay for college. Excited for college, but unsure how to pay for it? Don't fret, we've got you covered with this four point plan. Understanding each step will give you a big leg up when it comes to paying for college. Here goes. First, save. As early as you can, put as much as you can into a 529 college savings or personal savings account. Second, learn about grants and scholarships. Federal grants are awarded based on need. Scholarships are awarded based on merit, athletics, and other criteria. To find out if you qualify, do your research, fill out your free application for Federal Student Aid, or FAFSA, and meet all of your school's financial aid deadlines. Third, apply for the Federal Work-Study Program. It helps students pay for college by offering part-time work opportunities. Students must be accepted into the program to qualify. Just check this box when completing your FAFSA. Another option is finding a job near campus. Many students work through college to cover expenses. While working more than 20 hours per week can cut into study time, the right job can also help you build skills employers look for in new graduates. And fourth, understand your loan options. Federal student loans offer better rates and terms than private loans, which often require a cosigner. Remember, unlike scholarships and grants, loans must be repaid. Those are the basics. So now that you know the different options that you have for how to pay for college, let's talk about how much college actually costs. These are costs that I took from the College Board's Trends in College Pricing 2018. These are last year's average undergraduate cost for college. So a four-year public institution, if you're a resident, so we're talking Iowa, Iowa State, one of those public institutions, one year of college costs $20,000. That's up 3% from last year. If you go out of state to a public institution, that cost almost doubles, $36,420, again, up 3.2%. If you think that you want to stay in state and go to a private institution, like Co College, Luther, Mount Mercy, something like that, one year is $46,950. Now that does include all of your room and board, your books, food, living on campus, things like that. Now keep in mind, this is the average undergraduate cost nationwide. So costs of Iowa colleges may be slightly less than this. Here's a chart showing what the Iowa college cost was for 2016-2017. The first three are the Regent schools, Iowa State University, University of Iowa, and University of Northern Iowa. You can see they're about $15,000 to $17,000 a year. The ones at the bottom of the screen are the community colleges, Eastern Iowa and Kirkwood. They're about eleven dollars to fifteen. dollars The ones in the middle are the private colleges that cost more. This does include tuition and fees and room and board living on campus. So as you can see, college does cost an awful lot. But we're here at Kennedy to help reduce that cost. We have a lot of people here at Kennedy that can help you with this. The very first thing that we recommend you do is to fill out the FAFSA. Here's a video that will explain a little bit more about what the FAFSA is. Getting ready to go to college? The Free Application for Federal Student Aid, or FAFSA, is for you. It's what the federal government and colleges use to figure out your eligibility for financial aid. That's money for school in the form of grants, work study, student loans, and even some scholarships. If you plan to attend college in the fall, it's usually best to file your FAFSA in October or November, the year before you start. Check with the financial aid offices of the schools where you're applying to see when their priority filing deadlines are. If you miss your school's deadline, don't worry, just file as soon as you can. But be aware that most schools have a limited amount of funds to award each year, and the earlier you submit your FAFSA, the better chance you have of receiving aid. You can fill out your FAFSA online at fafsa.gov. Be sure to get the URL right. Filing is free, but some shady scammers will try to trick you into paying to file. It'll probably take you less than an hour to complete your FAFSA. If you're a dependent student, you'll need both your and your parents' tax and W-2 forms from two years prior. 
For example, if you're filling out the 2017-18 FAFSA, you would use your 2015 taxes, 2016 taxes for the 2018-19 FAFSA, and so on. If you're independent, you'll only need to provide your own. You'll also need bank and investment statements, plus your social security card, driver's license, or proof of permanent residency. Got questions? FAFSA.gov offers helpful resources such as live online chat, phone agents, and email support. When you're ready, go to FAFSA.gov to submit your FAFSA. Your future awaits. I know this feels very overwhelming, but if you are organized and you have a plan, you can do this. So the first thing that I want you to do is to gather the materials that you need for the FAFSA. The FAFSA opens up on October 1st, and the sooner that you can do it, the better off you are. After that, start searching for your scholarships as soon as possible. If you wait until spring to start searching, you're going to miss about half of the deadlines. I do have an appointment request page that I can show you in just a little bit. If you'd like to meet with me to talk about scholarships, I'd be more than happy to meet with you. One tip that I tell a lot of students is to make sure that you are looking at the smaller scholarships. It doesn't have to be a huge $50,000 scholarship. Even $500 and $1,000 scholarships will add up and they will help you a lot. In fact, very few students actually win a, an entirely free ride to college. Of the students that enrolled full-time at a four-year college, only 0.3% got enough grants and scholarships to cover their entire cost of attendance. 1% got 90% of their cost of attendance covered. 3.4% of students got enough to cover three quarters of their cost of attendance. And about 14% of students got enough to cover 50% of their cost of attendance. The students that did win scholarships, almost 70% of them got less than $2,500. You don't have to go after those big scholarships but it's important that you apply for scholarships in general. Ready to apply for college scholarships? That's great, but maybe you're feeling overwhelmed by the process. Not to worry. Let's break it down into four simple steps. Step one, get organized. Set up a system to track your progress, a spreadsheet, notebook, or calendar. Then build backwards, starting with the final due date and including deadlines for recommendation letters, essay drafts, and the date by which you need to request school transcripts. If you organize everything now, you won't have to cram the day before the application is due. Step 2. If you know you need letters of recommendation, start asking people who know you and who can speak to your work to write them for you. Remember, you want to seek out teachers, counselors, and former employers. Friends and family members can't write your letters. Step 3. Get working on your essay. Careful, you can't submit the same essay for every application. But this doesn't mean you have to write each one from scratch. Tailor your essays to suit each organization offering scholarships. Ask a friend or teacher to read over your drafts. Step 4. Proofread everything. And don't miss deadlines. Scholarship committees are looking for ways to cut down the hundreds of applications they have to read through. No need to make it easy for them to disqualify you by making careless mistakes. Here's some general tips for how to win scholarships. It really is a numbers game. Even if you are the top of the class, you may not win a scholarship. It does have a bit of luck to it. To win more scholarships, you need to apply for more scholarships, but only apply for those scholarships that you actually qualify for. Don't waste your time on ones that you don't qualify. Of course, you can't win if you don't apply. This stat gets me every time. One in four students never apply for financial aid. There is money out there. You just have to go look for it. After you apply for your first six scholarship applications, it does get easier. You can reuse your essays and tailor them to each new application or each new college. The number one thing is don't miss deadlines. They will not accept late applications, so don't waste your time. Our teachers here at Kennedy are really good about writing letters of recommendation, but you really need to ask early. Don't go to a teacher one day and say, can you write me a letter of recommendation at due tomorrow? It's not going to be as effective as if you had asked them two weeks ago. 
When you do ask a teacher, make sure that they can write you a really good letter of recommendation that's relevant to whatever the scholarship or college application that you're replying to. It would be very nice if you would give the teacher a copy of your resume and of course say thank you. It's important that you provide the teacher with all of the necessary forms and information about the scholarship so they can write a letter of recommendation that will help you. Make sure that you ask early. As I mentioned earlier, there are a lot of scholarships here at Kennedy that you have an opportunity to get. We're going to spend a little bit of time going over the scholarship website so you can see what's out there. To get to the Kennedy Scholarship webpage, you click on Academics, go to Counselors, and then go down to Scholarships. Using your cell phone, you can do the same thing. Go to the Kennedy website, click on Menu, click on the drop-down menu for Academics, the drop down menu for counselors and then go to scholarships and that will also get you to the Kennedy website. Now I will tell you that this website was just recently updated so it does look a little bit different than normal. The first place that I would like for you to start is where it says start here. So click on the start here. It'll bring up a bunch of scholarship engines. Now I do want to point out one of them in particular that was just brought to my attention recently. It's called Scholar Snap. When you click on Scholar Snap, it will allow you to create a profile and reuse that information on multiple scholarship websites. So you can actually click through and save time rather than having to retype everything, such as your name, your address, information about grades, etc. So this is a really great website for you to create a profile on. Other scholarship engines are on here that are really good. Basically, you can go through and just click through and begin to find scholarships that are set up for you, scholarships that you can apply for. Also on this Start Here page, there's a, a website that says click here to set up a meeting with Mrs. Ritchie. When you click on it, it'll bring you to another web page. On that web page, you can type in, I want to book a meeting with Mrs. Ritchie to talk about scholarship opportunities. Then you click on pick a date and you find out when you have a free period or when you have a release hour or before or after school and I'm available. So let's say I would like to meet with Mrs. Ritchie on, I have a first hour release hour on Friday the 7th. So I would click there. I'd like to meet between eight and nine, hit save. And then I would request the meeting and it, it'll show up on my calendar and it'll show up on your calendar and then everybody will know. It's a great way for you to set up a meeting with me if you want to talk about scholarships and not wait for me to send you a meeting request. Please don't book a meeting with me if you have class. I will not send a pass for you if you have class during that hour. You have to have a release hour before or after school or smart time. All right, let's look at another part of the Kennedy website. This is where the majority of the scholarships are. So if you go to the scholarship database, they are organized by month. So you can click on scholarships that are due in September all the way through June. There are some that don't have any deadlines. So let's start with the ones in September. I'm not going to go through all of the list. So basically, if you click on that, it'll bring you to this database. And across the top, it has the name of the scholarship, what you need to be in order to be eligible for that scholarship, what type of award it is, if there's a specific college that you need to attend, who you contact if you're interested, where the link is to apply. If it's one of those, if it's an application where you just go ahead and apply, it'll say student application, otherwise it could say something else, and then when the deadline is. So really this is just one big database. You just click on, if I'm gonna look at the AES Engineering Scholarship, I would click on link and it will bring me to that website. Then I just go through and I start applying. So there's a lot of different scholarships that are here. I did try to, in the eligibility, try to put a, a, some sort of disclaimer about what it is, whether it's for beauty school or engineering, or if you have to be the top 5% in your class. That way you had some sort of way to narrow things down and to make it a little bit easier for you. Then you just go to the next month and you continue all the way down until you have no more left. This is absolutely not an exhaustive list of all of the scholarships that are out there. This is just a compiled list that I've spent some time on trying to organize them in a way that will help you so you don't have to go to all of these different websites. 
but I do recommend you looking at the Start Here page and looking through other ones. There's a lot, there's millions of scholarships out there, then there's no way that I could have put them all on one website. So start with the Start Here and go through these websites and then go to the scholarship database. There are also some colleges that allow us to nominate students to potentially get full rides. Now these scholarships are not just money. A lot of them have additional travel and computer expenses. So if you are thinking about going to North Carolina State University for the Park Scholarship, the University of North Carolina at Charlotte for the Levine Scholarship, information sheets can be found outside of my room, 120A, and at the bottom of it, it says, I'm interested in being the nominee for one of these scholarships. That little slip of paper is due back to the main office with a resume by September 21st. If you're thinking about going to the University of Notre Dame, the University of Texas at Dallas, or Washington University at St. Louis, they also have amazing scholarship opportunities that you have to apply directly to the school. There's nothing that Kennedy does to help nominate those. You apply directly to the school. But I do have information about those also outside of my room 120A. So if you have any questions about any of these things, please stop in and grab a paper, email me, talk to your counselor, just get the information about it. Every year, Kennedy is lucky enough to have the opportunity to disperse up to $40,000 in scholarships and awards to our students. In the past few years, we have created a Kennedy scholarship application. In order to qualify for any of those scholarships or awards, you must fill out the application. If you do not fill out the application, you are not eligible for any of that money or awards. This application will be available in late September. It will be due in early December. And this year we're contemplating putting it online. So it's not a paper copy. It'll be something that you print out for a resume for later on. Keep your ears open for that. Again, if you do not fill out the application, you are not eligible for any of these awards. The application can be found on our Kennedy Scholarship webpage. Right now, the link is not live, but it will be available the end of September, so keep your eyes open for that. The rest of this time is devoted for you guys to start looking for your scholarships. The first thing I want you to do is go to Scholar Snap and create a profile. That way you can put your information in and start reusing that information on multiple scholarships. Begin your search for scholarships. Start on the Kennedy Scholarship webpage. Try and find at least three scholarships that you can begin right now so you don't put it off. If you have any questions, please stop in in room 120A and talk to me, or you can email me at srichey, R-I-C-H-E-Y, at cr.k12.ia.us. Thanks a lot, guys.